fighting. I've got the 5mm vertical bits glued in and they all lined up perfectly. I've got little bits of engraving laminate glued on the end just because it was the right thickness. And what that means is that each of these balsa wood, I'm using wood because I just loved the look of the brass with little wooden panels in the side and balsa wood's perfect for that. And that just sanded the ends a little bit and then that just pushes down into there and that then has a hole for the lens where the light can shine through and then the scenes, the different layers stretch between these three slots here. I think the back one is for the sky which is a transparency and then there's two cut out from metallic card that fit in there and that's really nice to put together as well. I'm just tapping, I've just tapped these holes if you can see, there we are, there's a tapped hole ready for an M3 screw to go in and tapping is brilliant because it's actually an awful quite often a lot easier than having to have a nut underneath. Obviously once this is all together I can't get it underneath it. One thing though, that I've found to my cost when I've made the first one of these, if you try and tap it, here's the tap, the little tap wrench, M3 tap, so the holes I think, well I've got the right size hole, here we are, look, here it is RS Pro, so it's got to be good. M3 tap, 2.5mm drill is the right one for it and these handily have one in there. So you drill it out to 2.5mm and then you tap it. But, I've done that, all those ones, let's do these ones. What you need to do first, little top tip, if you're tapping, because that's very, very close to the edge, there's not a lot of plastic there. So I found the best way is to clamp a couple of bits of wood either side, like so. And that really does make a difference, because the first time I did it, it split a couple of them. But when you do that, it doesn't. And the other good top tip I've found is to use some isopropyl alcohol. If you just dip the end of the tap in it, it's ideal because it stops it clogging up as you tap it. And as always, when you tap something, you go around and then you clear all the... because it's basically scraping its way through, cutting the thread. So you keep going back half a turn to allow all the little chunks of plastic, in this case, to fall into the slots that are either all the way up the tap. Just before I paint these carousels, I'm fixing the magnets in. So that the Arduino knows where these are, how far to turn it to get to a particular scene, there's five magnets, one, two, three, four, five, and one slightly inwards from the rest of them so it knows where zero is when you first switch it on, and then once it's switched on, it'll know where, how many sections to turn, if you like, with two little reed switches. These magnets, small that is, £1.35 plus that, I think. I, I thought this is ridiculous, some RS, because I wanted them quickly, I thought I had some. And then I looked at other suppliers that I use that generally are much cheaper for things, and they were £1.35. 30 or £1.80, that's just ridiculous, they're so small. You can get cheaper magnets, but it's one of those things. I assume well, for paying that much, and these are the ones I've used in the past, and they have worked really well. Obviously they're so important, integral to the whole thing, that I don't want to risk getting nasty cheap ones, and then finding that they're not actually powerful enough to work the um, reed switches. That'll do. Overdo everything. Excellent. Quite satisfying gluing things like that in because it just works and because super glue is so thin um, it just gets carried in with sort of capillary action. Brilliant! I thought I'd have a go at printing the one layer that needs to be a transparency. I am so pleased. So you can use any, I assume, any bubble jet, in, any inkjet printer, even if it doesn't say they can print transparencies, if you have the proper film, then you can. I'm so pleased. Laser cutters are so amazing. I'm cutting out the windows for the carousel from 2mm acrylic. 
pre-laser cutter, I would have had to spend ages marking it out, drawing it out painstakingly with masking tape stuck onto the surface, cutting it all out on the bandsaw, sanding it down, trimming it all the off cuts and bits and pieces. Amazing! And now, in the space of about a minute and ten seconds, I can cut out ten of them. I'm ready to cut out the silhouette figures for each of the five weather scenes, so there's ten in all. There's two layers that make up each one. I'm going to cut them out of this amazing metal metalised card. It's double sided, it's absolutely fantastic. And there's just enough metal on it to be able to bend it and it will stay put. Um, and equally it will cut on the laser cutter. It's what I made the um, wedding invitations from. You can get them I've mentioned these for a long time, you can get them as kits or ready assembled. You can see there's lovely all the different layers and colours and things and also there's the table seating name plates as well. Another little thing that again you can assemble yourself from kits or I can make up for you. I've also put down um, this the, on top of the honeycomb cutting surface because the honeycomb's got a ridge around the edge, so if you've got thin card, it's not going to lie flat. I've mentioned it before, but I've searched ages, and honeycomb stuff costs an absolute arm and a leg. This is a um, ceiling ventilator, like air conditioning grill, which is much cheaper, easy to cut. It's also brilliant because it acts a bit like graph paper. sort of demonstration of how amazing laser cutters are. I, as you know, I do make them a lot. Look at the intricate cuts on that. The intricate design, how thin these little bits are, even the little the spout on the um, kettle. Oh, sorry, spout on the teapot. You can see it's visible. Absolutely incredible. Love it. Another day and another excuse not to get on with what I started. These are all painted, ready to be fixed together. All these bits, the transparencies and all the little side windows are ready to be fixed together. And then I get a lovely order for a heraldic clarion door horn. A heraldic clarion door horn. Get the intonation right. I'd forgotten I had sold all of the heraldic clarion door horns except the one I thought I had that I put on display. And having dug this out this morning I realised I had taken the horn off when I'd run out of them some time ago and used it in one of the Nemnet Throbble kits. So I haven't got a horn for this. Also I noticed this display one had a chip right on the corner. I'm just not happy with that. So today I'm making Four more heraldic clarion door horns, which is great. A bit more laser cutting. Luckily, with a little bit of hindsight, I last week, two weeks ago actually, I did place an order for I think 30 more of these horns. I just don't want to risk the company stopping manufacturing them or something, it'd be a disaster. So I thought I'd get a load in stock. And then, if the horns still haven't arrived by the end of the weekend, I'm going to have to use the horn off my Nimpnet Throbwell. Never mind. Luckily I've still got some of the air pumps. I've got four left so that's good so I'm going to make another four of these and I can keep this one as my original. The nice thing about the Heraldic Clarion door horn, keep saying it, product placement, is that you can select how much cable you want attached to it because I bought loads of this. It's really nice cable. It's actually fabric covered but you'd never know it. It's fantastic stuff. So you, when you order it, you can select how many meters you want. And luckily, I had made loads more of these cable, nice little ornate cable fixings. Um, I did have I've got one of these. This is where the, the end of the copper cover cable goes in and you can connect it to your existing doorbell switch wires. Again, no expense spared. Overdo everything. So I'm gonna make four more of them and things. I'll get on with it. There's another fine example 
of the wonderfulness of laser cutters. Look at that, it's just beautiful. And there's a disc of red felt underneath, so you just get the lovely glimmer of red, which I so like in the designs. Fantastic. There comes a time in every man's life when you think, I've forgotten how to make one of these little wooden junction boxes. Hmm. Because I didn't draw any plans of these, I've just been copying them. So, I've cut some pine to the right size, sanded it, and all the rest of it. Now I need to make this rebate into which one of those little chock-a-block choc um, electrical connectors will sit. Now, either... Whoops! I was thinking, hmm, I can't use one of these flat bits because that big spike at the end will go straight through the bottom which I don't want and then I remembered I'd got one of these lovely bits and I can't remember what they were called I'll look them up and put up something on the video but these are perfect they're beautiful and they cut flat bottomed holes with really very little bump I realized I remembered I'd done it like that because there's a titchy little bump there and there so I'll get these drilled out it's so nice when you have lovely tools that do that work so well fabulous It's so nice when part of the construction process is really enjoyable. And this is really enjoyable. Here's the one of the finished painted um, window surrounds. And I just lay that flat. And then here's one of the stained window supports for the carousel. Rest that on there and try and line it up with the camera in the way. Get that so it's and that's really easy to do as well. You can see exactly when it's in the middle. And then put four little blobs of super glue around the edge and it soaks under. It's absolutely perfect and that's it. It doesn't seep out. I'll leave that there for a second. What you end up with is something like that. Exactly like that. No glue seeped out, nothing. Just really well stuck on. And then the next lovely thing is basically putting the windows in and they just fit in perfectly they push in and then I'll just put four more little drips of glue around there it's all hidden all sticks perfectly really enjoyable part of the making process this is great fun this card is so nice I've um, perforated put the rough perforations down each side so I can fold it over and you bend it and it just stays put exactly Here's, I'm just doing the rain scene, and it, it consists of the front one, which is all back to front because of the lens and the mirror. And there's the couple with their umbrellas, with me instructions, probably easier to see on top. The, the scene is a sort of reminder, there we are, you can see they've got their umbrellas up, and in the background the trees are just starting to flutter around a little bit. And then I've printed out the transparent. Something always so exciting about transparencies. They look absolutely great. So that's the rainy scene. And that'll go in the background. And then there's even, I'll show you what I've put together. I've done the first one here. This is the change change one. Um, you can see how it fits together. They just, having creased over, folded over the ends, they just slot in. I also cut out um, a funny eye shape bit, one of these, because that then slots in to some holes either side. And basically it masks any light that shines through here. That I just want the light shining through so you can read what it says, change in this matter, in this scene. But I don't want it, it, it was a problem originally, um, the light would you'd be able to see down into it and things like that, but that just solves the problem. So I'm going to get these done, the card ones all round first and put some spots of glue to hold them and then I'm going to work on the outer one which has got the transparencies and the um, tracing paper to give that lovely effect. Lovely. Right, I'm getting on very well. Here's one just before I finish putting them together. You can see there's the fair scene. Very dry. And it will it's all back to front because obviously it's got a mirror and a lens and there's stormy you can see them being blown apart blown all over the place in the park and the trees all without any leaves rain change yeah that's it so that's what the scenes look like at the moment 
And obviously the light's going to be coming from the outside inwards and then the mirror is going to be where you're going to view it. Here's one where I've put fixed the, um, the sky scenes on. So they look like engravings and they do really work very well. Just about, yeah, you can just see them through, down. So that's just a sheet of tracing paper between the two, so just to give a, a nice clear background. So that's brilliant. The next thing to do, which is really fun, is to put these windows in. And they just slide down, theoretically, just or not. There we go. When it slides down like that, I just, I'm so pleased with this design, it looks really nice. So I'll get those windows in, I'll get the rest of the um, sky bits and pieces on this one, and that, and put the tops on, brilliant. Just getting ready to finish the latest four door, clarion door horns. Got the front bits on, got all the metalwork engravings and everything else. Come to glue in the battery clips. Here's one I prepared earlier, in fact, my one. A load of cack in the background, let's move it around a little bit. There's the battery holder, and that just sits. This has got the back taken off, obviously, and it sits on a battery clip that glues into that. And I have just purchased from Kitronic, they're a really nice company, no affiliation. But they do sell brilliant, very well priced electronic electrical components. I've just bought 50 of these, thinking, brilliant, I do get through an awful lot of these, why not buy them for less? 50 bulk buy. Come to glue these in, and of course, those of you who are way ahead of me, the wires come out the wrong end. So I'm just quickly redesigning a new version to accept the new type of battery clip. Now I have 50 of them and then I'll glue them into the and be able to get the wires through. You just can't let your guard down ever. Now this is all very exciting but when you look into it you can't see anything. We need a mirror mirror. That's the lovely windows and wooden bits. That's just so nice the way it spins like I've said and keep saying. If you're not into engineering and things it probably doesn't mean that much to you but creating something like this where you know there are two ball bearings that are just turning it beautifully perfectly around the centre without any wobble or anything. It is gorgeous. So we need a mirror. This is the strange shape we need because it's at 45 degrees within a whole, yeah, it's all very strange. And here, dear friends, it's an amazing product, mirrored plastic acrylic. Look at that, perfect. There's a couple of experiments from earlier and several of the mirrors cut out already, so I'm going to cut two more out of that. the mirror support cut out of uh, 10 mil acrylic I've just realized that I could actually now I've got a 3d printer print it with threads and everything but if it ain't broke don't fix it and it's quite nice I've set it up um, with lines marked on the front so I can sand the 45 degree angle at both ends and there's a little notch that I've marked in the top so I know where to drill the hole through for the, I think it's an M3 tap I need there, and an M4 hole in the middle, there's another little slot there. So I'll get on and prepare these and see if I can get the mirrors mounted. Although, I have to say, the thought of 3D printing this is quite exciting. Another great use for the V-blocks. Now hold these, hold it at 45 degrees. 
tentatively move it around so I get it perfectly lined up. There we are. As before, I'm going to dip the tap in a bit of isopropyl alcohol just to help it clear all the channels and things. <laughs> Right, we've got the slot cut out. If I was going to make loads of these, I would have done it with the router, but having a small place to work, it means that it's such a faff getting it out, getting the dust extractor, getting it all set up, you know, it's just a pain. So drilling a row of holes and cut using a standing knife just to take them all out is fine. Now what I'm going to do now, this is what I made up. Look a right old mess, but what they are, are two read read, uh, read switches. Why say read relays? One read switch there, one read switch there. I've um, soldered them onto a bit of Vera board because the idea is they are going to sit in here and line up with the magnets. Originally, the original climatic revelator, I had one magnet on the base, on the carousel, which lined up with the datum scene, which I think was changeable weather. But it meant that if the chain broke, or which it hasn't by the way, or if the motor skipped, or if some, I'm just trying to think of all these things that could possibly go wrong, it wouldn't have a clue where it was until it came round again. So in the end, when I started making them for other people, I've put uh, you know the five magnets on, one of which is centred a little bit close to the centre, which tells the Arduino where it is, and then the other one tells it when it's lined up with each scene. It's just better feedback, so it knows exactly where to stop it. Now reed switches are quite delicate, even bending the wires on the ends you always get a small pair of pliers and hold the wire on the glass side and then bend it on the other side because if you just try and bend it chances are you'll crack the glass tube that the reeds sit in. What I'm going to do now, I have connected it up to my lovely multimeter um, on audio because I just want to check before I glue these in and position them that they work. Here's one of the incredibly expensive magnets, £1.35 plus that. Now I've joined this up to the yellow one and the yellow one... Brilliant! Before I go any further I've just connected two LEDs to this so I can check the reed switches do actually work. Well, no, then one of them switching on occasionally and the other one isn't switching on at all. As I keep telling myself when building two things don't do it to the second till you've tested it so I've now glued the whole lot together. So the problem is there's too much of a gap. I went on my plans that said cut this slot five millimeters deep and there's about a five millimeter gap there but for some reason it hasn't worked this time so I'm going to have to, then I've glued this on in, with industrial amounts of super glue typical so there's no one going to get that apart I'm going to have to carefully unsolder the reed switches and then chisel off this and then redo it funny enough I vaguely having to remember doing this last time how strange ta -da! look at that we've got a carousel finish with all the different layers and the best thing of all is it does that. It gives such a strange optical illusion. The fact it's going round and each scene passes. They're smaller than they will be because I'm going to put the Fresnel lens on the front. But I'm so pleased. And you can also hear the reed switches clicking. Brilliant. In the end, having fiddled and faffed about, I had to fill in that slot again because it wasn't necessary. They were too far away. You can't see it there, but there's about there's now about a three two two or three millimeter gap between the bottom of the magnets and the reed switches, and that works perfectly. Ooh, it's in my stomach. It's very pleased with that. 
The other nice thing about this is the optical illusion gives the impression, because it's all stereo, because you've got two eyes looking at it at slightly different angles, that it's actually embedded in the wall of your house, which is interesting as well. And here's a Fresnel lens. Another top tip. Fresnel lenses are amazing. Uh, invented by a French person, funnily enough, called Fresnel, who worked out that instead of a lens having to have a huge dome all the way up from solid glass, you could just start lots and lots and lots of concentric circles just with the correct angles there and it would work. These ones, top tip, um, therefore helping you to read books when your eyes start going a bit this has got polythene on it still but I'm going to cut the middle out of it as a disc. I love the look of Victorian um, opticals, optics. They did so amazingly with the technology they had at the time. I love the fact that you get with this effect and with the mirror double reflecting inside you get a sort of double reflection funnily enough. A little bit of distortion and it just looks lovely. I thank you. And here's the other one with the lid on. This is why the mirror is such a strange shape because then it projects it up. Fantastic. Right, next thing is to make the front bit, the lens holder and the cabinet that goes on the front and the other works. Thank you very much for watching. Do remember to check out my website and my Etsy shop and YouTube where there's videos of everything that I've made, lots and lots of videos and Facebook for more up-to-the-date stuff. Thanks very much again.